And I always start with the silver tap why jazz ne serait pas d'aller vers un nouveau paysage, mais d'avoir d'autres yeux, in the sense that uh, the, the true research uh, is a journey is not just to discover new countries, but to have uh, new eyes. So we need to, to learn to have new eyes, huh? to discover new things. And so the, my presentation online is uh, organizing with the five points, the digital transformation, system transformation, creative leadership skills, disruptive impact on creativity skills, and conclusion. Um, uh, so the, I just a few words for what, what is a, a, a digital transformation. It's just a, pa a, the, a passage from economy, economy of, sca of scarcity to economy of abundance, uh, from atoms to bits, in the sense that uh, when you have uh, just uh, one uh, uh, prototype that you can replicate uh, uh, with bits uh, many times as possible as you like, uh, uh, creating a digital twin. And then, uh, uh, then you can apply uh, technologies like AR, augmented reality, or VR, virtual reality, to exploit uh, as much as possible all the possibilities that you create in the, this uh, virtual environment. Uh, but uh, just to give you as past examples uh, of digital transformation, think about uh, newspaper. You see the impact on the market uh, when uh, digital uh, printing was introduced. A, a, a a there, and then for digital cameras, you see just uh, you know the, the, the market uh, revenue going down deeper and deeper as soon as you introduce uh, a, a digital transformation in specific market. And uh, so for music, and so offer, uh, you have to know, uh, to be careful about offers versus demand, scarcity is gold, abundance is commodity, the market value decreases. And so right now, uh, digital transformation are in, uh, right now uh, are at this level for different uh, sectors, uh, different markets. Uh, music is 100% digitalized, uh, travel 70, 70%, entertainment 50%, 20% manufacturing, LKR 10%. And so you will see later with, with the presentation of, uh, of Dr. Alberto Folletti uh, how uh, digital transformation is impacting healthcare, that is the most needed uh, uh, sector uh, right now. And uh, we have different penet penetration by sector, by geography. And so we have a, a new system, ecosystem grow. I have no time to go into detail of this one because I prefer to use my time for the, the, the uh, better, better topics uh, later, and, uh, and then uh, we, we, uh, we're passing from value chain uh, uh, to the value chain uh, concept. In the past, uh, efficiency was just the key to uh, get more value uh, through continuous innovation, little steps to, to gain efficiency and, and so increasing value. But now we're talking about uh, value chain evolution, like uh, uh, perceived value and innovation in parallel sectors uh, with concurrent innovation, strong deployment control, share control on route, scale advantage, competition is uh, on price. But then, this, this was the reality uh, since the turn of this century. Right now and tomorrow, you see out of field innovation, marginal node deployment control, measured value creation, intermediation advantage, competition is on these models, not, not on uh, object any longer, just on biz business models. And so just to give you a a an example that is quite clear, is computer marketing. Dramatic cost reduction expanded the market from mainframes to mini to led to the disappearance of Univac, Bell, uh, Siemens, and so on. From mini to PC destroyed uh, DEC, uh, VANG, and so on. And post PC era crisis hit uh, IBM, HP, Dell. And we'll see in a few years what will happen. And so I take away value chains are macro processes, competition happens within and across value chains, competition decreases margin, margins, competition shifts efficiency benefit to an end uh, consume, uh, customer, disruption change the value chain. Done. System transformation. Now we can use this kind of approach to have more tools to augment humans' capabilities or machine capabilities. And, uh, and you see uh, there, 
you have humans, you have machines, you have uh, all these kind of tools that you can uh, augment the function for humans and machine, and they are converging through this right uh, part that is uh, to arrive to symbiotic autonomous systems. And uh, if you like to go deeper in that, I recommend you this, this, this book. You can download this book from, uh, uh, from internet, uh, it's, uh, it's free. And so I, I, I think that uh, you can get a lot of inspiration from this because uh, you see uh, in that book you will find augmented machine technologies already selected uh, with the, hype, the, the uh, Gartner hype, hype uh, curve associated by color and then uh, augmented human technology, same with the uh, uh, Gartner hype, hype cube uh, associate, hype curve associated, and then uh, symbiosis fostering technologies uh, just to reach the uh, right side of, of the previous schema. And so this symbiotic relationship with tools leads to humans 2.0 and beyond. And so you will see augmented humans, humans 2.0, and then uh, you can uh, just uh, unleash your fantasy, uh, uh, and somebody is just uh, talking about transhumanism, uploading your cautions on, on the machines. Can you imagine that? Okay, thank you, Kurzweil. Good luck. <laughs> but then it's better to use uh, our resources to just to solve seven grand challenges. Those seven grand challenges are just the fusion of the previous 70 challenges of GD, GDS. Uh, and so uh, I think that uh, uh, in this way, uh, just uh, they can become more manageable. Uh, but then we have to just uh, go a step further in learning. We have to leave silos, silos by ha behind. Okay, otherwise no solution will be available. And so creative leadership skills, then we need uh, an inspiration. The inspiration is the day science begins to study non-physical phenomena, it will make more progress in one decade than in all the previous centuries of its existence. Such an inspiration. You know the, the guy here. <laughs> huh? But then, uh, uh, the, the inspiration just forced us to go to this, uh, this diagram that is uh, usually to solve a problem, we focus our attention on, the, on direct space formulation of our pro problems only. We don't take into consideration the co-direct space, the reciprocal space, and reciprocal co-space. So at best, we use hopefully only 25% of information that, to solve our problems. Is that correct? Unfortunately, it's not. We use even less than that because uh, uh, we don't take into consideration the other three parts, so we completely ignore all the relationships. So it's not 25% at all, it's just uh, maybe 80%, and if we don't even take into consideration the cross relationships that allows us to make the jump that Tesla thought about. That is the jump from outer universe to inner universe. You see the green horizontal line, no? Separating the representation of the outer universe, direct space and co related co direct space, and the inner universe, reciprocal space and co-reciprocal space. And so, continuous learning from outer, you see outer universe is our brain, and go inside, inner universe, inside our brain. And then we can enlarge a little portion of that brain that is uh, uh, just uh, around the central sulcus in this way and see all the relationship there of the, uh, our neurons on the, on the, on the cortex uh, and see there on the right side uh, the, the uh, perceptive uh, uh, components uh, of our representation and on the left side the motor rep uh, 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 representation that was already known from the 50s um, by Penfield and Rasmussen with the, the homunculus. But then now we have a more precise vision of what that representation is. But then think about what is this? This is the cerebellum. <laughs> Anybody told you that the cerebellum just uh, is made by 82% of all neurons that you manage in your body. 
82% are there. Our quarters uh, uh, have only 70% of, of neurons. And, but all our attention is focused on our cortex only. So wise. <laughs> like, like uh, you know, focusing our attention on studying say, different, different substances and, and, and absolutely wiping out all the information about the water on our body. That is the main component and, and, and a major uh, important component of, of our body. But anyway, this is the usual approach, was the past approach. So what is physical and what is non-physical huh? at this level? And so we have just to, take, uh, to remember that we have to take, I already presented these slides uh, uh, in Rome, at this, at this conference in Rome, where it's just uh, saying that we have to remember to use all our components of our mind, that is the intellectual and intuitive and emotional, emotional and instinctive, okay? All together, all coupled together. And to arrive to the collective intelligence to overcome individual limitation for common well-being. And that's, uh, I think, the next step. You know, we have to work together uh, uh, to arrive to the quality of quantity, from quanta to qualia. Each quantity has a specific quality. We didn't think about that in the past. We assume that all the quantities are just the same. Good luck. Disrupt impact on creativity skills, okay? Observe pour la plus grande part, imaginez ce que l'on s'attend à voir. So, to observe for the major part is just to imagine what you are already expecting to see. If you have this kind of attitude, you will never discover anything new. <laughs> Thank you. So, what is this? I already presented this, this joke uh, in the past, uh, so for a few of, of you already know the as well, but uh, I elaborate on that. So, what is this? I just turn upside down. What is this? Now. A river. But, you know, in previously presentation, you had a little difficulty to, 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 to discover that it was a river. Why? Because we don't take into, into consideration gravity polarization for our observation. Our, all our observations are biased by gravity. We don't take it into account because we stay with our feet on the ground. <laughs> but gravity polarizes our way, the way we observe things with this, this kind of, a, of a frame, a reference frame. And in fact, the previous image that I presented to you was using a different frame, representation frame. That's the difficulty that you, you felt in, in the recognition. But then, to extract more information, we need both of them. Combine it together. And then you see that uh, we need both of them with the uh, six orientations. Six basic orientations, fundamentals. And then when you use all the six, you discover that there are not direct lines. They are a conceptual abstractions that we use on the, on the real. Is that correct? No, asymptotic abstractions are just abstra abstractions, okay? So, rotation implicitly define associated line orientation, and oriented lines implicitly define associated oriented orientation. And uh, I, this is too technical, but I, uh, from a scientific point of view, we already know that uh, we take into consideration with the geometric algebra this kind of property. But this kind of property is global, it's not just local, and so, if we apply at the, at the global level, we discover that this property just originates from Leibniz. From number of components given by Leibniz combinatorial partitioning formula. So we can use the partitioning formula to learn about co the combinatorial side of orientation. And when, then we discover that those orientations, you see the Leibniz, uh, the or the Pascal triangles, the way you like, or the, uh, there are many names for this one. But those ones, that, that, that is something that you discover immediately, as I discovered uh, 40 years ago, that those are, are just the powers of 11. 11, 122, 1334, so are the components of, of the power of 11. And then if we associate this kind of knowledge 
we discovered the combinatorial side of orientation with point, lines, surface, volumes, hypervolumes, and then we arrive at any di dimension we like with a computational approach that is solid, that give, give you exact error approximation. And then we will be able to compute the space-time tesseract. You see the vortices there. Do you remember vortices by Clark Maxwell or something? Somebody like that, huh? you see? But now we are able to compute locally, point by point, this is the kind of behavior. And then the same framework is just at the basis of our narrative proficiency. If you take into consideration the existing uh, logic cognitives of PERS, then, or, or just the other uh, 16 uh, relationship of the elementary pragmatic model, then you see there, this is the Rosetta Stones, they connect the, the kind of, uh, of spatial orientation with the, our uh, narrative capability, with the colors uh, perception, with color perception, with the frequency associated to that. So, we arrive to our conclusion that uh, traditional mathematics has really a big, big limitations. The, the first one is the continuum, uh, continuum hypothesis assumption that, that uh, is giving you assuming infinite, infinite, infinite precision by default. Life is a compromise. If you give infinite precision, that you lose orientation structure. That is the most important one for real life and you have no, cons no information conservation, dissipation, total dissipation of information. And so now, now we are in, in, at the level to, to follow two different models to understand our reality. The past one, that is by default, systems are simple, some of them are complicated, occasionally systems are complex, which the systems are exceedingly rare. This is the traditional approach, the Newtonian approach. Or by default, the new one, systems are complex. Simple systems are limiting cases, include the complicated system. Complex systems treated as if they were simple tend to generate with the problems. <laughs> ha. <laughs> so the quality of quantity, big data versus deep unity. Big data analytics versus deep unity, wisdom. And so we have two different modeling approaches. The past one, big data, just a separation, the usual uh, silos approach. And then, and then you have this kind of, of uh, focusing on in, inner matter best operational representation compromise, a representation space endowed with full flexibility. In fact, you can use your imagination to develop any model you like. They are all unreliable. Good luck. Uh, simplify system dynamics framework, Newtonian approach, to model any geometrical space and monitor system dynamics behavior only. A spectator, a spectator, can become a system in natural perturbation. So we put aside any, any humans from our models, you know? Yeah, it's simpler. Uh, or the deep unity approach, you know, the deep unity wisdom, that is the one for living matter best representation operational compromise and out our representation space, one-to-one -one linked to our inner representation space. Natural system dynamics framework, quantum field theory approach, to model projected relativistic geometry and to anticipate emergent system dynamics, an observer, this time not, not a, a spectator anymore, but an observer, a uh, human being becomes an observer, can become even a system natural co-artifacts. And then you jump from the past to the future. I propose this kind of approach to you, you will remember uh, Roger Perros, Rupert Sheldrake, Federico Fagin, uh, Jerry, Jerry Pollack, and then to Luc Montagnier, that uh, right now is just waiting to, 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 to start a, a new project uh, to, uh, to discover the imprinting properties of water. If you would like to know more, for December, hopefully I will finish my book. <laughs> this, is, this is a commercial. But never forget that the, the worst enemy you have to fight is yourself. Good luck.